Guitar Hero, a historic and iconic video game franchise that pushed the popularity of music games to a new level alongside Rock Band, Dance Dance Revolution, Just Dance, and others. There was a time when everyone you knew was playing Guitar Hero, where every GameStop and Target was filled with boxes full of plastic instruments. It was an almost inescapable pop culture phenomenon. But not all was right in the world with music games. As Guitar Hero and Rock Band's popularity increased and the war between the two heated up, saturation of the market increased. Retail store space is a premium and stores didn't want to dedicate their entire space to plastic instruments so they started having them out less. In addition, publishers started pushing for more and more title releases. While Rock Band managed to maintain a more steady output of games, instead opting for DLC most of the time, Guitar Hero had resorted to pumping out multiple games in the space of a year, effectively cannibalizing its own market. While Guitar Hero 1, 2, and 3 were released on a once a year cycle, once the publishers smelled blood in the water, they tried to capitalize hard on the trend, effectively self-destructing in the process. They released 11 games in the span of about a year and a half, with many being licensed spin-off titles like Guitar Hero Van Halen or Metallica. In addition, all the competition within music games was quickly driving up music licensing costs, leading to worse song lists as games went on. The saturation continued, sales kept going down, and eventually with the fall off of the fad, the rhythm game market in the US effectively crashed, leaving the corpses of Rock Band and Guitar Hero behind. Rock Band made a semi-successful foray back into the market a few years ago with Rock Band 4, but Guitar Hero wasn't able to see the same success with Guitar Hero Live. While the gimmick wasn't received terribly poorly, with the game taking on a new gameplay style seeing six buttons layered in two rows of three, the game itself saw some criticism, and success was fairly low, seeing the game's servers shut off in winter of 2018, effectively rendering more than half of the game unplayable. And now they're facing a false advertising lawsuit. Yay! Guitar Hero by no means had a graceful exit from the market, but there are still many people out there who love the game, and it's still to this day one of the most recognizable video game franchises. Chances are, if you show someone a plastic guitar controller, they'll know exactly what they're looking at. So what if I told you Guitar Hero wasn't dead, and actually is arguably in the best place it's been in years? Thanks to some extremely persistent and dedicated community members, Guitar Hero has begun to slowly rise from the ashes and develop a consistent and interested player base again. Some Guitar Hero streams see hundreds of viewers, and some Guitar Hero YouTubers see hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Let's take a look at what has kept this dedicated community alive and what's pushing it forward to new horizons along with what might become some potential roadblocks on the way back to mainstream success. First off, we have to talk about Clone Hero. Clone Hero is a fan-developed free Guitar Hero engine. This was developed by many of the prominent Guitar Hero modders for the mainstream Guitar Hero games. A quick side note, the community essentially hung on over the years playing modded Guitar Hero games with custom songs modded in, but we'll get back to custom songs later. By the time Clone Hero came around, even in its earliest state before it had score saving, was at the same time prominent YouTubers had been starting to see success, so of course they began promoting Clone Hero. It was a great way for them to get players back into the game and attract new players, because they didn't need to go through the complicated process of modding Guitar Hero 3 PC, or deal with getting a JTAG'd Xbox 360. So now we can talk about the prominent YouTubers and players that have really been pushing the game back into the spotlight. Of course people like Asai, Yukog Monkey, Randy Ladyman, and Jason Paradise deserve mention, with their growing Twitch streams and YouTube channels reaching thousands of people. But I also want to mention a few more up-and-coming players and streamers, like Darkly in Darkness and Frosted GH, who have seen popularity due to their extremely high technical skill at the game. These players have done so much for the game, promoting Clone Hero, pushing people to come back and play, helping them to find places to buy guitars, and so much more. Even with Clone Hero being an excellent Guitar Hero clone, the game wouldn't have gone very far if there hadn't been some people to promote it. So let's talk about customs. If you're not familiar with rhythm games, some people, including myself, have theorized that there are two things that draw casual players to rhythm games. The first thing is an interesting way to engage with the game. In the case of Guitar Hero, this is the plastic controller. The second thing is recognizable song lists. If you've ever been to an anime convention and wonder why they still have DDR Extreme running, a version of the game that is well over 10 years old, it's because of the recognizable song list. Guitar Hero sees this too. So what happens if you tell players that they can play a very, very large amount of the songs they can even think of on Clone Hero just by a quick download? I can tell you from first-hand experience that it'll make a lot of people want to play the game. Custom charts have absolutely contributed to the success of Clone Hero. And while I can't name all of them here because there are so many, the charters making charts for the game even to this day certainly deserve mention, with some banding together to produce set lists for Clone Hero larger than any of the official games ever got close to. Special shout out to the anti-hero charters who have been making some absolutely stellar packs that any Clone Hero player should check out. Also, a shout out to Custom Song Central on YouTube, who post about new custom Clone Hero content frequently. While we're on the subject of invigorating the game with customs, we need to talk about one notable charter who has done so much for Guitar Hero. Exile Lord is not only responsible for the solo a series of custom songs, an infamous set of extremely difficult boss-esque songs that have seen five major releases over the past 10 years, in addition to plenty of other difficult charts, but he is also a prominent figure in the modding scene, 
having dedicated a large amount of time to modding Guitar Hero 3 PC. He is also a part of the Clone Hero development team, clearly being a very talented programmer, as seen in some of his videos on his YouTube channel. Whether you love it or you hate it, the Soulless series of songs has certainly been a very influential aspect of the popularity of custom songs in Guitar Hero. Whether it's GHP FCing Soulless 3, to Asai's reaction to Cage in Soulless 5, to Darkly finally FCing Soulless 4 and ending a long battle, these videos have seen hundreds of thousands of views and are very well known. The contributions to the community Exile Lord has made cannot be understated. Speaking on the subject of more notable community members, another thing that has been driving some of Clone Hero's success is the recent rise in so-called mod charts. These are custom charts with edited videos to do interesting things with the charts, and we have seen some incredible inspired and crazy mod charts. Notable mod charters include people like Oriota, who made the well-known Aleph O mod chart, as well as many people on the Mania Hero team who make mod charts. These people are pushing Guitar Hero charts beyond what could have ever been seen in modded Guitar Hero games, even though a lot of the time it's done with basic video editing tricks. These kind of fresh shakeups are what an old community really needs to keep old players engaged and to get new players coming in. So where do we go from here? At this point, it feels like there's no way the community could fail. A constant influx of new songs to play, popularity pushing the community to higher heights, and tons of people coming back for more. The way I see it right now, there are two potential setbacks that the community could face that need to be solved before the community truly lands in a safe spot. The first is controllers. No matter how well kept your guitars are, we're looking at controllers that are over 10 years old at this point, and that are not the easiest to fix. The recent popularity of the game has absolutely inflated the market, pushing some guitars like the Explorer over $60 on eBay. The one saving grace right now is that recently the RafNet Wii adapter made it possible to turn Wii guitars into very effective and usable wired guitars, some of which are preferred by top players now. This is good because there are certainly an abundance of Wii Les Paul guitars, but even those still break and the RafNet adapter can be hard to get because of its recent popularity. There is one fan-made guitar project in the works right now, but we've yet to see the results of it, and the question of whether they can rise to the demand is yet to be seen, so for now we'll have to wait and hope. The second issue is that of Clone Hero itself. Clone Hero is of course a fine game right now, being a very feature complete single player experience for most players, featuring score saving and such. But there are many more requested features that as of right now aren't planned to go into Clone Hero. This is where Project Note Hitter comes in. Project Note Hitter, or PNH, is the working title for an essentially rebuilt from the ground up version of Clone Hero, being worked on by a few members of the Clone Hero development team. As of right now, most new feature additions, such as the highly requested online multiplayer, will not be added to Clone Hero, instead being added to Project Note Hitter if that ever comes around. However, with the small development team, updates have been slow and the team has been keeping their head down working on it. A remade and improved version of Clone Hero with more features may do even more for the community to push it out of the corners of the internet and back into the public eye as a viable rhythm game to play in the current year. So for now, we'll have to hope that the PNH devs can pull it off. Guitar Hero has seen a massive resurgence in popularity, pushing back toward its glory days faster than ever before. While it has a few roadblocks to cross before it makes it all the way back to the way it once was, the game still has hundreds of dedicated players taking the game to a new level in more ways than one. I highly recommend you check out Clone Hero if you've played Guitar Hero in the past and are looking for more, or if you're a new player looking to start shredding plastic guitar with the rest of us. Thanks for watching, and apologies for the slight video drought. School caught up with me recently. I've got a few videos in the pipe right now, so stay tuned. I've gone back to streaming rhythm games on my Twitch, so if you're interested, check it out at twitch.tv loserman loserman_wins. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.